Good evening. Good evening. Glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house, house of the Lord. Thank you, God. Uh, this weekend, it's Christmas. Amen? So we thank God for that. We thank God for Jesus. We thank God for, um, for this being in the house this Sunday. It doesn't come around that often when we think about Christmas. So we, And I think the next one, because of the leap years, I think the next one is probably like 11 years, 10, 11 years away. So getting together on the house of the Lord on a Sunday morning, Christmas morning, has a, has a more special emphasis on it, I think. Also, then the next weekend will be watch night, uh, going into the new year, the year of promise, and then service on Sunday. So you get a whole lot of Jesus, and we're going to do a Jesus run from Sunday on. Amen? But good to be in the house, though. Invite people to church, invite people to the house of the Lord Sunday, uh, watch night as well, and then New Year's. Uh, what you do with the first will then govern the rest. A uh, theme within the Word of God was that the first belonged to the Lord, and then what you give to the Lord, then He covers the rest. And so we're going to start the new year in communion on watch night and praise and worship, video presentation, a whole lot of things going on. And um, because that's how we start a new year off, new year off, you know, we're going to start that off right. So we're going to, tonight though, we're going to be essentially part one, part two will be on Sunday. We're going to deal with uh, the birth of Christ. Amen. We're in Matthew chapter two. Let's remember Christine and Sandra. Uh, let's keep them, keep them lifted up and keep them prayer in prayer. Uh, Catherine Wright, my mother as well. Thank you, God. Matthew chapter 1, we got some reading to do, but we read what well, we read on, in the church, especially on Thursday. Amen? The Bible says, they that hunger and thirst after righteousness will be filled. You got to get thirsty for God. Thank you, Lord. Not only get thirsty, but you got to stay thirsty. Thank you, Lord. So Matthew Matthew chapter 1, we got some reading to do tonight, but it's, but, we, but we need to know the story. We need to know the story. Matthew chapter 1, we're going to read from verse 17 to the end, which is uh, 25, and then we're going to read a few verses in chapter 2. Thank you, Lord. There's some things in the story that we need to, to look at, pay attention to, but also there's some things in the story that have been passed down sort of traditionally that don't jive with the book, right? So if it does not jive with the book, we leave that out. Amen? We should be able to find everything in the Word. Amen? If we're going to talk about it, we should be able to find it in the Word. It should be a biblical reference for whatever we're talking about. Amen? Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Matthew chapter 1, starting at verse 17. Thank you, God. Are you there? So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. From David unto the carrying away into Babylon of 14 generations, and from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ of 14 generations. That's important. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. And David unto the carrying away of Babylon are another 14 generations. And from the carrying away of Babylon unto Christ are another 14 generations. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph, before they came together, she found him, she found, she was found with child by the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, minded to put her away privately or privately, privately or privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream saying, Joseph, thy son of David, fear not to take thee, Mary, thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save the people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled that was spoken of the, spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, 
which is interpreted, being interpreted, is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from his sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife. And knew her not until, the, until they had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Amen? All right, chapter 2 says, When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. When Herod the king heard of these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ shall be born. They said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, Thou, thou Bethlehem is the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, equipped them, equip, uh, inquired rather, of them diligently what time, the, what time of the star appeared. He sent him to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. When he had found, when they, when he had found him, bring him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they heard that, when they heard the king, they departed and lo, the star which was saw in the east, went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When, the, when, the, when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. When they were coming to the house, they saw, they saw the young child with Mary and Joseph, excuse me, with Mary his mother, fell down, worshiped him, and when they had opened the, their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of, of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for tonight and the, and the word that you present to us tonight. We thank you, Father, that with all our getting, we'll get understanding. Thank you for the ministry of the Holy Spirit that will help us to rightly divide the word of truth. Thank you that no weapon formed shall ever prosper. Thank you for those that are assembled in this room and those that are watching with us, connected with us virtually. Thank you, God, for what you've done thus far and what you're about to do. So, Lord, we thank you for the miraculous happening, God, on a regular basis. The move of your Holy Spirit being stronger and broader and deeper in our lives like never before. Thank you right now, Father, that the word will illuminate us and inspire us. Lord, we give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Thank you, God. We serve a good God, amen? We serve a good God. When it comes to, when it comes to reading, when it comes to studying, uh, it comes to the word of God itself, you just got to take time for yourself and get in it, amen? We're going to be doing a reading. We're going to be doing a Bible reading uh, at the beginning of the year going through the word of God, and so that we would stay sharp. It's meant for us to remain sharp, but then also to know the truth. The Bible says the truth, that truth will set you free, but it's also the truth that you know. There's a whole lot of truth that's out there, but you got to know it for yourself, right? And you also got to go back into the scripture and say, well, I saw that in the word. Amen? And then when you see it in the word, you take it up with the author. I didn't write it. It's what the word said. Amen? So when we think about the word and, 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 and diving in, it talks about rightly dividing it. If, it's, if, it it's, if it means that we can rightly divide it, it also then means we can wrongly divide it, right? So we have to be, we have to be students of the word. So the Bible tells us to be workmen that needeth not be ashamed and rightly divide the word of truth. Amen? All right. So what we're going to do is look at, look at essentially part one of the, of the story tonight, and then we'll address probably part two on Sunday if if the Lord willing. But there's some things in there that we need to understand as far as rightly divided so that you would know that some things have been traditionally passed down, but not, they were not biblically passed down. Amen? All right, so all the generations from Abraham to David, 14 generations. And Babylon, David unto Caroline, Babylon, 
and to the carrying away in Babylon and to Christ of 14 generations. Most time within the word, those generations ultimately lead up to about 1,500 years. So we talk about the Lord's plan was at work a long time. Amen? So when you think about something, something that's being done that long and how, how the Lord knows when to orchestrate a thing, knows when, okay, the time is now. Amen? The time is now. It's one of those where it, things have gone on for many generations, for many years, but the Lord in his sovereignty says, okay, this is the time right now. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, or like this, when as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph, they're engaged, before they came together, before they were intimate together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, God. We shouldn't, whenever we think of, of biblical stories or, or passages in the word of God, she was impregnated by the Holy Spirit. We should not just sort of skip over that like it's like it's a nursery rhyme or something, right? When we think in terms of that you know it's an old story, this, it's a part of the, of, of the story of Christ, but this is the immaculate conception that she is pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Jesus. We should be pregnant with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit should impart something into us that we should carry full term, that we shouldn't abort, that we should hold fast to. Amen? Thank you, God. When you th so when you think of this story, that th th the way things were done, Isaiah, Isaiah, we read Isaiah a little bit last week. So Isaiah was prophesying about it. But then he also takes it a step further, and that was verse 9, but excuse me, chapter 9, but in verse 7, he takes it a step further and said, this, this woman is going to be conceived by God. So everything that the Lord was doing had to be checking boxes at the same time to make sure that there would be no dispute when it came to the scripture. Because the prophets before told him how he was going to come, and so he made sure that this was the right time. And where he went, all these steps along the way, wasn't just things that the Lord was doing, but also making sure that he sowed the Old Testament to the New Testament. Amen? Thank you, God. She's conceived by the Holy Ghost. The Bible says the Holy Ghost overshadowed her, and then she becomes pregnant by the Holy Spirit to carry Jesus. Amen? God, I need an amen for that. Now, birth of Jesus Christ was like this. And she was, the mother of Mary was a spouse to Joseph. They're engaged. Before they came together, she, found him, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. That there was also, when it comes to the story about, uh, about, about relationships, that you're supposed to wait before you sleep together. Are we still in the Word? We still can talk about that. Even though, even though it's an easier thing to do now that, with relationships or whatever, that you're just going to sleep together. It was not that easy to do. It was not, it was one of those that was not supposed to be, it's not supposed to be done until you're married. The two become one when they become married. Amen? I know it's antiquated, outdated, but you still should think in terms of saving yourself until you find the right one. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, because everybody you sleep with, you have an attachment to. That's a whole nother message. We're talking about the birth of Christ tonight. Amen? That's a whole nother thing. Amen? Thank you, God. So with Joseph, Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. So for verse 18 and 19, verse 18 and 19 says that she's conceived, that the Holy Spirit overshadows her. She's conceived by the Holy Spirit, right? And at this point, she's 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 pregnant where it's noticeable. Joseph rose up. Amen? Bef before Mari, before, before Jerry Springer, all that kind of foolishness. Yes? Okay, because she's a young mother. Amen? So you know it's gossip. It's a young mother. But this is different in that time where it could cost her her life. Not only would it cost her her life, but it also would then cost their family in terms of their status in the community, if there's one at all, would drop off because there would be essentially a scarlet letter, without better words, it would be like a scarlet letter on the family because of the decision that the child made. Because you're not only going to look at the child, you're going to look at the parents. Okay, you allowed this? 
this is what you this is what you sign up for. They are spouse, they're engaged. And this is how you're gonna present it to me? Pregnant? Come on, you gotta know the story. That's why you that's why we can't just sort of peruse over and just sort of just oh, glean on the story like it ain't nothing. But it's one of those where the Bible said that we already know Joseph's heart. That he's a just man. And anybody that's going to want to out you in public is not a just person. Because he could easily just walk away from the situation and say, I don't want her. She's pregnant. That, that's not mine. We haven't slept together. We were espoused. Okay, we were espoused, engaged. And so, because part of that part of the process was the man was supposed to go off and work and also then build a house and then come back and receive his wife. That's the marriage story of Christ. And at some point, when we talk about the ten virgins, that's a whole other thing too. But you, the husband was supposed to go off. After engaged, the engagement's made, I'm going to go prepare a place for us. Amen? John 14 says, Jesus says, I'm going to prepare a place for you that where I am you may be also. Amen? So it was, it was one of those where it, you, in order to understand the word, you also got to understand the Jewish side of it. So there's parts of that that we need to make sure we understand. So he was respectful of her. Even though she knows that she's carrying a child that's not his, he could easily back out of it, right? But in that same instance, he was like, I, I'm gonna, I'm, as a just man, he said he's going to put her away privately so that she's not ridiculed. Because it also shows you if you're going to have a man in your life, he should cover you. If he's going to not just sleep with you, he should cover you, which means he's going to protect you. He's not going to let anything happen to you, whether it be physically or verbally. He's going to cover you, right? And he, thank you, God. And he's never going to ask you to compromise. Thank you, God. He's a just man. Thank you, Lord. That's the line that the Lord comes from, that is connected with, that he's a just man. It wants to be aligned with that he's a just man. And not willing to make a public example of her was minded to put her away private. Verse 20 says, but while he thought on these things, because what, now here's what you, cause what you got to understand, 18 and 19 tells us the backdrop, that, okay, he's a just man, she's pregnant, fully pregnant, that it's noticeable, he wants to put away privately, but 20 said he's thinking about that thing. Huh? 20 said he's thinking about it. And then the Lord, he goes to sleep, and the Lord speaks to him in a dream. The angel of the Lord comes to Joseph. And, come on, you got to know the story that it's not just, God, it's not just, it's not just a kiddie thing. The angel of the Lord only showed up at important times in the word of God. Amen? And I know you're wrestling, Joseph, so I'm not going to send an angel to talk to you. I'm going to talk to you myself and tell you to take this woman to be your wife, but this is a good thing. Amen? Thank you, God. Be, by while he thought on these things, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not, because you've got to know that Jesus comes from that line. Joseph, thou son of David, fear not, take unto thee, marry thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is the Holy Ghost. I know you're questioning this thing, Joseph, because you ain't never heard of nobody else being pregnant before by the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. Thank you, God. Because in his mind, it's one thing, in his mind, he's initially thinking, I'm going to cover her and keep her private. In his mind, though, who slept with her? This is adult class. Who slept with her? I heard what you said, but who slept with her? Because there's no reference for this before other than what we're dealing with now. And so then the Lord shows up and says, relax. This thing that is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Take her to be your wife. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That you have, that you, thank, I, thank you, God. Joseph, I know this looks messy, but I need you in this. Amen. Thank you, God. And so oftentimes when the Lord places, plants us somewhere, it's not always going to be perfect. But that's why he planted us there, to, for us to work in this thing and make it better and to make it become what he wants it to become. The Lord shows up and plants you where he needs you, right? Joseph, I know it's messy. I know that it's, you're already starting this relationship off with questions. But I'm in this. Thank you, God. I'm in this. From the outside, it looks messy, but but this I'm working this thing out. I'm in this. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. 
You got to know when the Lord is involved in the thing. Because sometimes our eyes, our eyes will fool us thinking that, okay, the man has messed this thing up. There's no way I'm involved in this. It's not working. It's not fruitful. No, no, no. You're in its infancy right now. You're at the very beginning right now. But in the end, it's going to be fruitful and it's going to be prosperous. But you got you to gotta stick with God knowing that, okay, the Lord didn't tell you. Look, the Lord, I know you, you're thinking I can leave tonight. I ain't even really got to say nothing to in the morning. I just, I can leave tonight. Because you know, you know if, if, if a man is not fully committed, he'll bounce. Yes, he will bounce. Thank you, Lord. So the Lord, the Lord steals him, gets him strong, and tells him, don't just, don't just cover her, but also take her as your wife. Amen? She shall bring forth a son. Thou shalt call his name Jesus, thank you, Lord, for he shall save the people from their sins. Joseph, I need you in this, and I need you when the time comes to name this child because we're going to look to the father to name the child. You're going to name him Jesus, for he shall save the people from their sins. Now, all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken, by the, spoken of the Lord by the prophet. This is Isaiah. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, shall bring forth a son, shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted God with us. Thank you, Lord. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife. Amen? If the Lord said to do it, I'm going to do it. Thank you, Lord. He might have wrestled with it the day before, but now after he woke up and slept on it and the Lord talked to him, I'm going to do it today. Amen? Amen? And, it, and, it's, and the text says at the end of that verse, it says, And Joseph raised from his sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden and him, and took unto him his wife. Thank you, Lord. And knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. It means they didn't sleep together. They, did not, they, they still waited to be intimate until after they were married. And after the son was born, called his name Jesus. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod, King Herod, behold, there was came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. Amen? Okay, so it's not three. The text never tells us that it's three wise men. It's three gifts. Amen? So a part of the story that we have, or what you see in the backdrop, is three wise men. It's not three wise men. It's, been, it's wise men. But they all had three gifts. So we want to we want to assume that one king had gold, one had frankincense, and one had myrrh. No, all the wise men came, but they all brought forth gold, gold frankincense, and myrrh. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Saying so, th this was a time as well with King Herod. They were saying, "Where is that? Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and come to worship him." Thank you, God. So they came across the country following a star, knowing that this star was going to point them to the Messiah. Amen? Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. And then they came to the king of this region and said, where is the king? You know you're wrong for saying it, right? He is the king himself. And you're going to tell him there's another? Yeah, there's another. He's the king of the Jews, but he will be king of the world. So he's one of those where they knew who he was. And they traveled across the country following a star. Amen? Thank you, Lord. The, the star, for they have seen his, everybody say his star. They have seen his star in the east and will come to worship him. Okay, so again, astrology has a, is in itself, the stars are a map, but not to be worshipped. Amen? Can be used for guidance, but not for worship. Amen? A full moon is pretty outside, and at the same time, you go outside a little bit longer, you can see a little bit broader, it has its purpose. So, But at the same time, it's not to be worshipped. The Lord made all those things. Yes? We worship the creator of all those things. To give our worship to a star will be beneath the Lord. Amen? We break in commandments then. You should have another God before me. Amen? Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. So we don't worship stars. We don't worship angels. We worship the Lord. Amen? 
when Herod, Herod the king heard of these things in verse 3, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him, because he thought he was going to be overthrown. He was never in charge, what the text shows us. Amen? And when he gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. Where should this, where, where is the anointed one going to be born at? Thank you, God. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem, Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall, be, shall, shall rule my people Israel. So another, another check mark that he has answered for the prophets that somebody prophesied before that he was going to be born in Bethlehem. Amen? Here's a, here's a thing to keep in mind, too. They know the scripture too, but then don't worship God. Amen? So it's not just enough to know the scripture itself without knowing the author. They know word. They said they, he, he went to his scribes and his priests and said, where is he going to be born at? And they read the scripture. He's going to be born in Bethlehem. It's going to be one of the lowest of essentially all the other places, but that's where he's going to be born from. He's going to be the governor. He's going to run things. They got that from Bible. They got that from the Word, but they don't have the Word in them. So there's people that are, are that are that are there's people that are following a star with no word. And there's people with the word that aren't going anywhere. Thank you, God. There's no evidence that these wise men, wise men knew the scriptures. Thank you, God. So in thou Bethlehem in the land of Judah, that was verse, verse 6. Verse 7 said, Herod said, Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them digitally what time the star appeared. When did you first start seeing this thing? Because they can, they, they have, they can map when it first came up. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search diligently for the young child, not for the babe. Are y'all with me? Okay, the wise men did not come when he was in the stable. Are y'all with me? He's in the house. They got a crib now. They, he's not, he's, you didn't open a door for me before, but God opened a door for me later. So, so we good now. Amen. Then Herod went here privately, called the wise men, and cried unto them diligently what time the star appeared. So they went to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when, when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. Herod dirty. No, good and well that he is not coming to worship. Yes? For we see everywhere within the word of God, when we think about the Old Testament, especially the Old Testament, how when they were threatened, they would, they would try to commit genocide. Let's just take out all the male children to stop the seed from coming. Right? It was strategic. It was strategic. And the Lord responded to that. When we think about Exodus, and when he calls his people out of Exodus, the Lord responded. That's why he knocked on every house. Yes? It was in response because he's not going to allow you to take out his. Oh, at that time, it was an eye for eye. You, could, you, just, you just couldn't get away with that. And so he was a just God, and at the same time would give people a time to repent, to make sure there was blood on the doorpost, and you would be good. Amen? We're in the same time where everybody's got the same option. you got the same choice. He said he's going to come worship, lying through his teeth, coming to try to, try to kill the child because he's, it's, he's a threat to his monarchy. Right? but he's going to try and disguise it, saying, I'm going to come worship. You know that's the devil all day. Amen? Thank you, God. Now, when they had heard the king, they departed. These are the wise men. And lo, the star, which they saw in the east, went before them till they came and stood over where the young child was. Are y'all with me in verse 9? Okay, so verse 9 will tell you that the star didn't stop at his house. Verse 9 said, wherever Jesus was at outside, the star came over, stood over top of him. Amen? Are y'all with me? You got to know what the story is, right? You got to know when it comes to all these markers in the word, we're pointing him to the Messiah. Amen? That a star, the star was going to lead them across the country. 
It stopped when they got to Herod's house. When they left Herod's house, the star moved. And then wherever Jesus was standing at, when the wise men finally came, they saw the star above him. Right? Then they go into the house and present with him gold and frankincense and myrrh. Amen? When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. They knew that this was the one. And when they come into the house, they saw the young child. He's not the babe in swaddling clothes. He's a young child with Mary, his mother. I don't know where Joseph at. And fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gold and frankincense and myrrh. Thank you, God. That out of, out of nowhere, Jesus is hanging around outside. Star is over his head, goes inside, wise men come inside. They rejoice outside and then come inside and immediately fall to their knees. You ought to fall to your knees when you get in his presence. When you, I mean, when you really get in his presence. When you really get in his presence, there should be a weightiness. There should be, when we think about glory in the Old Testament or the Shekinah glory referred to the heaviness or the weight of God, could not keep you up forced you to your knees. Amen? Every knee's going to bow. Every tongue's going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And when you kneel before the Lord as reverence, and it shows us also a flash forward of the New Testament in Revelation, when the kings will take off their crowns and roll their crowns before Jesus, it's a picture of that already. When the wise men come, that they're coming across, but at the same time, their wisdom does not compare to his wisdom. Amen? As a child, and they know who he is, and they immediately fall down and worship him. Amen? Ain't, thank you, God. So wise men are worshiping, and at the same time, a king is trying to assassinate them. And there's people that know the scripture and don't know God, and people that don't know scripture but still know God. Thank you, God. When they saw him, they came into the house, saw the young child. With Mary, the mother, fell down worshiping, and they opened their treasures. The Bible says you're not supposed to stand before the Lord empty-handed. Are y'all with me? The Bible says when you come into the presence of the Lord, that you are not supposed to come into the presence of the Lord empty-handed. Thank you, God, that there should always be a gift when you enter the presence of the Lord. And they recognized who he was, and they presented to him gold. Everybody say gold. Frankincense. Myrrh. These three things are, are strategic as well. It's not by happenstance. Gold doesn't tarnish or corrode. Amen. Even when gold is refined to remove, like, remove dirt and everything that was from it, it's refined. It's, it becomes pure, but it does not tarnish, does not corrode. Amen. Thank you, Lord. His word will never fail will not tarnish, will not corrode, amen? Gold was also, at, at that time as well too, was significant when it came to recognizing deity and royalty. So when they present him with gold, they're essentially saying that he's royalty. Royalty was one of those gifts that you would have to present before the king that you couldn't present junk to the king. Please say amen. You're not supposed to just give God anything. Come on, Mary, when it came to Cain and Abel, you understand the story that Cain tried to work up something and then give it to God. If you're going to enter into his presence, you're not supposed to give God just anything. Thank you, God. He's changing the message. You know when they stood before, there's two men that stood before the, uh, stood before the Lord, and they came in, and it, the Bible says they offered strange fire before the Lord. That they, they, took, the, they took the incense that was supposed to be used by the priests, they came in and they offered strange fire before the Lord, and the Bible said the Lord consumed them with his fire. Don't be bringing that stuff up in here. When we think about the house of God, and we think about the people of God and the presence of God, and we think about this house, the place we are allowed to worship, that it's not, it's, it's not an Elks Lodge. It's not, it's not just another building per se. When we, just, when we set it aside and we say we're going to worship God here, then we should worship God here. Amen? And then we should have reverence for this place. Amen? Thank you, God. If we got reverence, then we shouldn't pick up gum off the floor. If you know who house it is. If you, if you understand, when you when when talk about reverence, or the fear of the Lord is that is a reverence that you have for God. Yes? 
that I, I, I want to try to pull that off here. Not in his presence, right? That we wouldn't be so reckless to offer God that. Amen? Thank you, God. So it was, it was important. It was important uh, for, uh, for the priest. The priest had to wash up and clean themselves up before they presented themselves before the Lord. Change their garments because they make sure that there was no stains on them when they presented themselves before the Lord. If you're going to offer anything to God, it's got to be authentic. And oftentimes what he's telling you to offer before the Lord, he's already telling you what you're supposed to offer in the first place. It's not like we got to guess at anything, because when it came to Cain and Abel, he, he said to Cain, he said, you know, if you do well, I'll receive it. You know what you're supposed to do. It wasn't that all of a sudden that Abel decided, oh, I'm going to give him the firstlings. He didn't just decide that on his own. The Lord had already told him what you're supposed to offer him. Otherwise, there'd be no faith. The whole thing about faith, faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. Faith has to have a word first. So Abel's not going to offer something to the Lord under presumption. He's got to do it by faith. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the Lord spoke to him and told him what they had to offer unto the Lord. And the Bible said that Abel, Abel offered him the firstlings of the flock and the fatlings thereof to honor the Lord. The first belonged to God. Amen? We'll deal with that in January. The first belonged to the Lord. But then all of a sudden Abel slid up later. I'm sorry, Cain slid up later. Worked up something in the field. And then presented it to the Lord later. Lord, I love you. If you love me then, see, because, again, when you think about somebody that loves you, somebody that loves you, appreciates you, has you in mind, you wouldn't just do things haphazardly for them because you love them. You love them. I, I would, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Today, today's my, today would be my father's, would have been my father's birthday, right? My, my mother is still alive. I'm not going to present my mother with no junk of anything. Huh? When you love somebody, you don't give them junk. Thank you, God. And if you love the Lord, you don't give the Lord leftovers. Right? You don't give them leftovers. So we, that, you, that you, would, you would exhaust yourself on everything else and then God give what? He's not in leftovers. He's not in leftovers. The first belong to the Lord. Thank you, God. Bring the first to the Lord. Thank you, Lord. As priority. As priority. That he's, that he's a priority. That he's not a second thought. He's not an afterthought. I'll get you straight, God, after the fact. That's not where he, that's not where he resides at. At the same time, but it, why would you, you want to get God later, but when you ask God, you want to make sure that, you, Lord, I need you to take care of this now. But you wanted to take care of me later. You wanted to honor me later. Thank you, God. So gold represents a picture of deity, deity and humanity coming together. It's reverence. It's valuable. It's of value. They're not going to present the king of kings with junk. It was valuable. And at the same time, at the same time, it showed them that this was a royal family, regardless of where they started at. Please say amen to that. That he was in a manger before, wrapped in swaddling clothes, couldn't find any place in the inn, but he was still royal. Amen. Thank you, God. We got to be reminded of that, too. When we look in the mirror, too, we're the king's kids. We're royalty. Act like it or not, we're royalty. That's where our line comes from. And if you know that you're royal, then you present yourself a different way. Amen? Thank you. I'm not holding my head up and out of arrogance. I'm holding it up out of confidence. I know who my daddy is. I know he made all this stuff. Amen? The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, and they that dwell therein. Amen? And God's got me. Look at, your, look, at your, look at your life, and you know God's got you. Look at all the stuff you walked away from, you was involved in, or things just came against. You know God got you. Yes? How he took care of you. When, and even at there's times we really want to take care of ourselves, but we were, just, we were just doing us or in the moment. But at the same instance, God's got us and has been taking care of us. And now we're going into a year of promise. Oh, you've, oh. Oh, we're going into a year of promise. That it's not just something that we just sort of that we sort of talk about for the sake of that we pronounce when we think about when it comes to the new year. We gotta hear the voice of the Lord. We gotta press in and we gotta pray. We gotta fast and begin to sin, begin to seek the Lord. And all this happened before we even set aside to begin to fast. That the Lord woke up. We woke up and the Lord said, "A year of promise." So everything that He had been promising, everything He said He was gonna do. 
we're going to see. Amen? Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. A year of promise. Thank you, Lord. Valuable. Gold is valuable. It's precious. It does not tarnish, corrode. Uh, it's also a picture of immortality because it remains. Thank you, Lord. There is no new gold. The gold that's here has always been here. Showing the lastingness of God and how his word will continue to last for, for, for ages and ages to come. Amen? Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Gold also, gold also has another point that we'll get to in a minute. Frank, everybody say frankincense. Okay, frankincense is an aroma that they were using. It's used like incense in the house of God, in the sanctuary, and it's also used to accompany offerings. All right? So we understand with the gold that he's, that he's royal. We understand with the frankincense that he's a priest. Amen? And that he's also going to be the Lamb of God because he's going to be an offering. He's priest. He's priest and lamb, offerer and offering at the same time. Amen? Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Perfume that was used in the sanctuary, incense in the temple, and was also used to accompany, accompany offerings for the Lord. Thank you, God. Also, thank you, God, was used to cleanse the atmosphere. Like a spiritual thing. That the, that the lighting of the incense all of a sudden shifts the atmosphere. Right? Priests would offer incense before the Lord before they went into the most holy place. They would walk around the most holy place with incense. They were burning, and those incense would go into the most holy place, and they could then present themselves behind that incense. Amen? Everybody say myrrh. Myrrh also then comes from, it's a, comes from the resin comes from a, a, a shrub or tree that had thorns in it. It's a picture of where he would wear those crown of thorns, right? Also when it came to myrrh, it also represented death because they would anoint your body with oil and a part of that anointing oil would have myrrh in it and also it's like used for embalming. So it's a picture that he was going to be born to die. He was going to be born royal, but he's going to die humble. He's, it's all these things, were, it's, they're, they're not accidents. It's not just things that they did, but they understood there was a purpose behind everything. Now, if there were other gifts offered, he would, he would let us know about it. But he wanted us to know about those things that were offered. Amen? When they offered them to the Lord. Amen? Thank you, God. And thank you, God. So after, they, so after, after the wise men offer these three gifts, the Lord speaks to them in twelve. Being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. They went into the presence of the Lord, and they did not go into the presence of the Lord empty-handed. They honored God. After they came out, the Lord gave them direction. Don't go back the same way you came. Go another way. So the trade-off was when they worshipped, God gave them a word to protect them so they could go another way. Because if, you, if you're going to come into the region and worship another king, that's treason. Amen? So if you come back that way where Herod is, Herod was nice when you first came through. He's going to take you out when he sees you the next time, right? The Lord speaks to them and said, because you've honored me, I'm going to give you direction to go another way to save your life. And it would truly make them wise men because they're now hearing God. They were following a star before but now they're hearing God for themselves now. Because when they got in his presence, all of a sudden they don't have to just look at the stars anymore. They can now can hear from the one who made the stars. Amen? All because they worshiped. All because they worshiped. Worship will open doors for you. Worship will open heaven for you. Worship will allow the Lord to speak into your spirit and download some things into you. Reveal some things to you in worship. Worship will also help you figure out who you are. In the midst of worship. Amen? This is what it says in 12. 13 says, when they departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appears to Joseph in a dream, saying, arise and take the young child and his mother and flee to Egypt. For thou there, for, for be thou there until I bring thee word that Herod will seek the child to destroy it. Joseph, I need you to go now and take Mary, 
and the boy and slide into Egypt and wait there until I fix things and give you a word for you to come back. Amen? Taking a trip from where they are to Egypt is going to be expensive. But the wise men just paid for it when they came in. You better hear what I'm saying to you. How God sets everything up. How he works everything out. Amen? How he's covered for their protection, their food and lodging. They don't have to worry about anything. It's been paid for. How are we going to get to Egypt? Go look in the living room. He's already took care of that. All those things that were given to him was valuable and then also used for trading. So it wasn't just that there was gifts to be given, but in the same instance, they could use those to, to pay for their trip, to barter with, but also their new location after they get back out of Egypt because they're going to need another house. Amen? Thank you, God. When he arose, he took the young child and mother by night, and they parted into Egypt and was there until the death of Herod that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to take out who was trying to take you out. I'm going to wait. Just go, go to Egypt and hang out for a while. And then I'll punch his ticket and you can come back. Because out of Egypt I'll call my son. Amen? Yeah. So, every place they were, so every place they were going was also a, a footprint also to let you know as, as a breadcrumb that the Lord had been in Egypt before too. Amen? Thank you, God, that he leaves from one country and then he slides into Egypt for a minute and is dwelling there, understanding the culture there, and then leaves out of there after Herod dies, that the enemy you've seen before, you will see no more. Because after a while, those things that are following you can't follow you no more. Because the Lord will cut things off and say the past has passed and that you have outlived and everything that is trying to come against you. Because it's not about you running from your past. It's about you outliving your past. Because the Lord will clean that stuff up. Amen? He'll, he'll, there's no residue of what was before. Just when he came across the Red Sea, you won't see Pharaoh no more. There's no evidence that you had a problem with Pharaoh no more because Pharaoh dead. There's no evidence of a problem now with Herod because Herod's now dead too. So you don't have to worry about him anymore. Come on back and come back this way and everything will be good. God's got a way of working everything out. If you obey his plan, then God has a strategy for everything to make sure that you are taken care of, make sure you're provided for, and that you are safe. Amen? Thank you, Lord. You will not leave. Thank you, God. Let's close there. You will not leave this earth until you fulfill your assignment. You will not leave here until God has said you have, that you have done what you're supposed to do, and then you can come home. Amen? No weapon that is formed against you shall be able to prosper. And every lying tongue that rises against you, he's going to condemn it. Thank you, God. Because it wasn't just enough they were trying to take you out, but it's also what they said about you, that the Lord took that personal too. So he said, every lying tongue, I'm going to condemn them. I'm going to shut every mouth that spoke against you. And they won't have anything to stand on when they try to speak about you again. Amen? Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Because you know, after a while, when you try to follow the Lord, people will try and discredit you. They'll try and talk about you. That you're a Jesus freak. Or you, I, that you're following after the Lord and now you're just doing all these different things. I remember you when. But that's the whole thing. You remember me when. You don't know me now. Thank you, God. Because if you knew me now, you wouldn't talk about what I used to do anymore because that stuff is over with. Amen? I'm not involved in that anymore. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, the Apostle Paul got to a place where, got to a place where he said, I wronged nobody. What? You wronged the whole, if we read the scripture, you wronged the, you wronged the whole bunch of people. He said, no, that wasn't me. Because if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Amen. Amen. I'm, not, I'm not accepting what I used to do as who I am presently now. Amen. Amen. And I'm not going to be condemned of what I used to do. Thank you, Lord. Now, now I'm living for Christ. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. So when we talk about new beginnings, it's one of those where the story itself shouldn't just be viewed. There's a whole lot of things traditionally that are passed down are just aren't accurate. But we just got to know the story. We got to know why the prophets prophesied about him coming and how Jesus 
and how all those things line up for all those prophets to be checked off, that it lines up. They knew where the Messiah was going to be born at. That's where he was born at. They knew where he was going to have to slide into Egypt because another prophet said that as well. And out of Egypt, he calls my son back. All, so all he's doing along the way, because thank you, God. Thank you, God. Jesus comes into the synagogue, opens the book of Isaiah, reads Isaiah 61, and said, this day is fulfilled in your ears, close the book, and then rolls out. Because he's checking every box. Amen? Thank you, Lord. He's checking every box so it would not be disputed. Because if, you, if he's checking every box, then you got an issue with the scripture. You don't have it. You tr don't, don't all of a sudden say that you change now because you've governed your life by these scriptures. And now that he's checking every box in the scriptures, he got to be who he said he is. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And there was times in the word itself that Jesus said, don't say anything yet. But then there was also times where he said, the one that you're looking for is me. Amen? Thank you, God. We know who he is. And we celebrate. Amen? We celebrate the birth of Christ unapologetically. Thank you, God. Unapologetically. When it comes to our faith, we're unapologetic about our faith. Yes, we serve Jesus. Yes, I believe that he was born of a virgin. Mother's name was Mary. Joseph accepted her, covered her, protected her. Born in Bethlehem, slid into Egypt, comes back to Nazareth. We, see, we believe all that. Amen? We believe all that. The star, that the star, what they call the star of David, right? Also, a picture of who he is identifies that Jesus, this star, was associated with the Lord stood above him and shined on him, offered him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And the Lord speaks to them, his parents, and speaks to wise men and covers and protects them and keeps them safe and then takes Herod out. Amen? Thank you, God. To protect his son. Amen? To make way for his son. Thank you, Lord. And we're to make way because when we read the next chapters over, the Bible immediately goes to John the Baptist telling you to make way, prepare ye the way of the Lord. We're supposed to be preparing the way. we got to be talking about the gospel, not just talking about getting stuff. we got to make sure that we're telling people that Jesus died for us, that people need to know the good news. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Because all this other stuff isn't really considered gospel. It's teaching the gospel itself that Jesus died. Amen? Thank you, Lord. And then rose again for the remission of our sins. And if he be lifted up, then I'll draw all men unto me. Amen? As long as Jesus is the sinner, everything will be all right. Amen? Everybody stand if you can. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Pregnant. She becomes impregnated by God. Jesus. So this thing that is conceived in you is conceived of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Never slept with a man. Thank you, Lord. But the angel of the Lord comes and visits her in her bedroom and talks to her. And then she's just smart enough to say, be it unto me, according to what you say. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. She wasn't scared of the angel of the Lord being in her room. Lays down and then, and then a few days later, a few weeks later, all of a sudden look and see her, her stomach is changing, her body is changing. Pregnant by God. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus kicking in her womb. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Outside walking and talking and doing all those things while she's carrying the Messiah in her womb. Thank you, Lord. That he's also going to grant us tasks that seem to be impossible, but totally possible with God. Thanks, you Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
thank you. You know what I need to do? You know, what, obviously when it comes to marriage, you know what I need to do? I need to go see my cousin. I need to go see Elizabeth. She's pregnant too. Thank you, God. Goes into the house and then Elizabeth greets her when they come into the house with just a blessing when she comes to the door. And then she blesses Elizabeth. And then John leaps in the womb of Elizabeth. And she's filled with the Holy Spirit. Come on, man. You got to get this story, man. This, this, this is not just, it just, it's so much to it. Amen? It's so much to it. So when we think about the infilling of the Holy Spirit, infilling of the Holy Spirit, and we talk about the book of Acts, it happened in the living room of Mary and Elizabeth. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. And it was two women blessing each other. And the Holy Spirit, you pregnant, I'm pregnant too. And so what leaped in you also leaped in me too. Come on, they connected. Thank, I'm not, a, look, because you, you're pregnant before me, but I'm going to come help you give birth to yours. Is what Mary was sent there to help Elizabeth give birth to John. And at the same time, also then know how to handle Jesus and walk this out because it's a new thing for her. Then we flash forward to the New Testament and John says, prepare ye the way of the Lord and that he that comes out of me is not worthy to, he that comes before me, he that comes after me, I'm not worthy to unlatch his shoes. There he is. He's, and then Jesus shows up. Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And then they both come out and they're standing in water. But 30 years before that, they were both sitting in water in their mother's wombs. Amen? Come on, you got all this story, all this stuff tied together. If we read it, if we read it, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. You were born first, but then I was meant to serve you, though. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. John baptizes with water, but he that comes after me, God, he going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for your word and the richness of your word. We thank you that with all our getting, we'll get understanding. Lord, help us, help us to understand the word. And in doing so, we, could, we would understand you more and understand ourselves even more. Thank you right now for grace and for mercy. Thank you for the season that we're in. Thank you that no weapon formed shall ever prosper. Thank you, Father, for grace and for mercy. Thank you, God, from faith to faith, glory to glory. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, that we that you continue to reveal yourselves unto her unto us, because you said in your word that you come in the volumes of the book. So, Lord, I thank you right now uh, for revelation from your word. And I thank you for what you deposit in us as we read, every time that we pray. Thank you right now. Thank you right now. Thank you for having your hand on our lives. Thank you that we will not fail. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. We will not fail. Thank you, Lord. We got the Lord on our side. We got the Lord on our side. He will lead us and direct us. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Thank you, Lord. When a man's ways please the Lord, he will even make his enemies be at peace with him. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This Saturday, excuse me, this Sunday, rather, this Sunday we have service at 11 o'clock. Get up in the morning, have some breakfast, eat, open some presents. Slide into church on Sunday. Slide into church on Sunday. Um, then the following Saturday will be watch night. 
Uh, we're going to be celebrating the new year, a year of promise. The Lord said it was a year of promise. So we're believing, for, we're believing for that. We're believing for that, and that he's going to show up strong in the new year and reveal to us, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That he's a promise keeper, but then also we got to be promise keepers too. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. And then we're going to slide in again next Sunday. Because uh, uh, you just stayed up late before anyway. I'm still a night owl. So we're going to stay up late for watch night. And then we're going to slide back in service on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Giving our first to the Lord. Thank you, Lord. We have communion at night to honor the Lord that night. A part of that, a part of that, and a visual presentation. And then the first comes in, and we start our first day of the year in the house of the Lord. For trajectory. This is where we're going. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Serious about God. Thank you, Lord. Serious about God. And the train is moving. Get on board or get off the track. The train is moving. The train is moving. The train is moving. Thank you, God. Expecting great things. Expecting the great things. Serious about God. Serious about God and the things of God. Let's receive the blessing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Any other announcements that we uh, that we have before we close, though? Did I miss anything? Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Serious about God. Thank you, Lord. It's time to be serious. Thank you, Lord. You know, in the word, he says, I either want you hot or cold. Thank you, God. The Lord doesn't deal with lukewarmness. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto the Father. And whatsoever you ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you will ask anything in my name, I will do it. Oh, Lord, you promise him? You promise him then. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Early Merry Christmas. Happy New Year's. We just thank God for what he's doing. Amen. We thank God for what he's doing. Excited about the things of God. Excited about the things of God. Catch fire and stay on fire. Thank you, God.